Hello and welcome back to round two coverage of the 2023 United States Disc Golf Championship presented by Innova. You're here watching the back nine of the Winthrop Arena course on Joe Miss Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Yobari. Sullivan Tipton, kind of the, the star of the show in the front nine with the big ace and then birdieing eight and nine afterwards, kind of stepping into the, the spotlight there in a bit. You had mentioned on the front nine, if you didn't watch that, it's the first time he's ever been on coverage or at least on the lead card at a major event of any kind. There is that one, looks so pretty on the scorecard as we take a look at the scores coming in. Chris Clemens right now, hot round in today at 11 under jumping him up all sorts of spots and that kind of shows you where the course is right now with the conditions it's pretty calm very attackable see what happens here on this back nine yeah hole 10 you got a little momentum from nine hopefully the second easiest hole going right into the easiest hole but this one does have teeth as well if you do throw it out of bounds you go directly to a drop zone or your previous spot so you can go over the OB and try to hit the island for the eagle too, or you can do what Sullivan is doing right here and trying to throw it straight. Got a little cabbage on go. that right side. That's fine. Yep. That's good. Yeah, that's close, but it's in. Joel, as we've said, likes that flex play. Doesn't go too hard over with this one. Love it. This looks so good. Love I it. I don't think he should. Love it. If he does go full flex, he could probably go too far. Yeah, you're Love probably right. it. <laughs> so good. What a shot. Who did that same flex line in round one? I was Gannon. Talking. Gannon, yeah. Just, I love that shot shape. Gannon did a, a, little, a lot more flex than Joel, but this is a just a little more turn. Can it finish with a little bite back to the left? It looks sure. like it. Yeah. Let's call that one 28 feet. Maybe even closer. A couple of eagle looks coming in. This and looks Robert. pretty good. Needs to get down. There is an out of bounds on the left over there. That's a path, but that gets down just in time. He's looking at about 300 to the pin to 60, maybe. So you're going a bit wide there. That same disc that he aced with. Sit. Oh, my goodness. No, no, that's an OB. No way. And he's, brutal. He's going to have to rethrow. I meant sit so he didn't have a 30 footer. Yeah. Not I didn't realize the out of bounds is one foot away from circle's edge. You know, and I'm thinking back to hole six when he threw a really good looking drive on the beach hole and he just barely went out of bounds, causing him to take a bogey. And here he goes from easiest hole on the course, a, a, a good look at a birdie at least. It yes. wasn't a guaranteed birdie coming, but now he's going to take a bogey. Two shots that looked pretty good out of the hand. Yes. Robert with a good approach, and now Kyle for Eagle to get to 15 under. And as well as he's been putting, that is a surprise miss. Surprising what an Eagle putt will do to your psyche. <gasps> oh, no. That's a miss as well from Robert. But, you know, you get the Eagle putt. There's a little extra pressure on there. Sure. Oh. This is the same distance this time for par. And oh, no. no. Robert. Oh, man, how fast it can happen. And Joel Freeman is going to create some daylight yeah. with that fantastic eagle. He's going to move to 15 under. And that tie for first is a tie no longer. And that is a tough bogey for Robert. Played the hole exactly how you wanted, took the risky play out of... Out of play, just going for the safe layup, throwing a good approach. Just could not get it done on the green. Look at how that hair <laughs> slams over to the one way, and then it's just <laughs> right back to the that was a That was a wild slow-mo. <laughs> right back to home. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. That must be nice. <laughs> Hole 11, par 4, 734. Hazard everywhere you see long grass and rocks. Bunch of landing zones to choose from, but the most popular is about 450 feet off the tee down to that left side. From there, you have a pretty manageable low forehand flat putter 
flat mid range, whatever you kind of want to try to get something to settle on the slanted green. Joel going big shot here, trying to intentionally fade down to the bottom of the hill in this Looks narrow great. strip. Yeah, it just. That's the wow. exact amount of commitment that you're looking for. There was no hesitancy in his form, his follow through. Perfect shot. Now Joel's on a nice little streak. Yes, he is. Nice flatten at the top of the shot. Looks this the should same. have plenty of distance. Maybe the only thing could down. be too yeah. much. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, right next to Joel's perfect shots. That'll be in the 270 to 280 range forehand most likely. Sully going to show us forehand tee shot. Nice and wide, trying to get over that center fairway bunker. Not and a problem for that. him. Beautiful. All highs are one angle. Nearly the same shot coming up, just maybe a little bit shorter. This also looks really good here for Robert. Sit. Yeah. Wow. Great drives from the group. Everyone executing their game plan perfectly so far. Sully going to be first with the chip forehand tee. The only thing you worry about being so far back is he's going to be roll. coming with a little angle. Yeah. And if it bounces, now flop. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sit down top of the hill. 30 footer coming back. Gets that distance with such ease. That's a lot of spin. Robert from probably 300, maybe 310, and sit. Come on, don't do it. They just don't stop, do they? Oh, man. Uh, not after the three-putt bogey on hole 10. You can't have that happening right afterwards. Unlucky. So he'll putt from right there with penalties still in the circle, but it's for par now. See, I like the way that one landed. Yep. Not as much spike. Really want it to come in on a, almost a flex line. Joel going to be going with a Gator 3, I'd imagine, or a Gator of some kind. He really likes this disc for these ki kinds of distances. See, and because he put Anheuser off the bat, it doesn't have that much momentum going into the ground. Easier for it to sit. Just skips up the hill, doesn't yeah. ever get up on edge. Important putt, you feel, here for... Robert, and yeah. it's not going to connect. So not feeling it right now on the greens. A little bit worried about his mental game going forward. It's going to be tough to swallow. I wouldn't be worried about his mental game right now. I mean, there's two bogeys on that scorecard that are reflected because of kind of bad breaks. I mean, very nearly great shots. The one bogey he took on hole three, he earned that one with a poor second shot. Woo, elevator down. But Sully's been playing very well. Has not shown any signs of uh, nerves that you might think that somebody would be feeling in this situation. Well, that one kind of fired in there, didn't it? Sure did. Maybe it's not. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's incorrect to, to talk about nerves at hole 11. They're settled in. But if you're, if you're not comfortable about your place, then you start doubting yourself. And you, you're starting to see that reflected with Robert on the green. And you're not seeing any of that right now with Sully. Looking at hole 12, one of the most dangerous holes on the course, as it is a stroke and distance rule hole. There is the drop zone. If you go out of bounds, you can advance there, but if you go out of bounds a subsequent time, you don't advance at all. You're just gonna stay on that drop zone, throwing that blind shot from about 360 feet. And we've seen great players take huge numbers here. So this is one that you do not wanna mess around with. You know, one thing we don't talk about on this hole as well is Joel's got it turned over. I, I feel oh, wow. like that's just so far. <laughs> but once you get to the green, wow. if you put yourself at about 45 sure. feet, it's a dangerous green, and if you roll out of bounds there, you re putt. Yes. And Kyle looking to be getting aggressive with this drive, moving from left to right and hyzering oh, yeah. past the OB island. That is a great tee shot. What's his angle going to be like into the green from there, though? Is he blocked off by I, those trees? I on think the right? he's. I think he's far enough that he's going to have a just fine looking straight. Look at this. What is monster. this forehand? 
That is up there where Joel's flex backhand landed. How on earth? Like I knew, he, I thought he might get aggressive, but that is blowing my mind how far that just went. Did That's we, 500 Why plus. don't we have the... Uh, I wish we could do the rewind. You know, we're, we're at the mercy of the editors here for this whole follow flight stuff. I want to see that forehand again. That was crazy. This was a layup play. Getting out to the left. Can it get down? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's perfect. That tree right there is a great spot to try to aim for on your second shot if you're not going for the green. Forehand, forehand. I mean, with Has ease. Has ever been done? With ease. With Has ease. Has that ever been done? I've never seen it. I've never seen I've it. I've never seen it either. Now we'll see it again. Look at this thing. Absolutely base. And five or six inches more, that might hit the bricks, skip a bit, maybe roll down the hill. Oh, great what a great shot. reaction. You see what I'm saying? Paul, this is he's got yeah, all the room oh, to work with. Perfect spot. And he can see the basket, which I don't think Joel He needs to slow down. I don't think Joel and Sully had the same. Slow down. Oh, oh no, way. that's a kiss of death. Yeah. And Kyle, who's just been kind of living on the edge all round, one way or the other, this time the roll does not go his way. And then he just He's lays gone. up. Oh. Really conservative. I love this from him. Wow. He goes, you know what? I'll take the double bogey. Wow. That's so smart. Because I've seen 12s on this whole yeah. sure. he, And he yep. just threw it perfectly. That's his disc guarantee that he's like, yep. nope, this is my disc. Yeah, and I'm sure he's, you know, he obviously doesn't know that he threw the shot nearly perfect, just got the wrong stand-up roll. But, I mean, when you're standing back there, you're thinking, how did that go out of bounds? Like, and nobody's giving you a report. Sure. I'm surprised to see him make that choice. I mean, I don't disagree with Yuli. It's certainly a damage control oh, play. Well done. That is a nice putt Needed after what putt. he's been through yep. these last couple of holes. It's a damage control pay, play, but I am pretty shocked to see him go to it. Yes. Same. That I mean, that's that's high level uh, trust in yourself. I think that people start getting aggressive when they don't believe in themselves because they think that they can't get him back and they got to save every possible stroke. Very confident young fella here. Kyle Klein, unfortunately, taking the double bogey. Maybe it wasn't necessarily warranted. Well, and you look at the position he's in. He has a lot of birdies to to deal back. Yeah. You know, it's. An, I, I feel like if he's maybe struggling coming into there, he definitely goes again. But he's kind of – he's in the lead, so he loses two. He's yeah. still two back or right. maybe one back. Well, just like Close that, to the lead. he's four back. But Joel that's not Freeman. bad with two rounds to go. Sure. Joel Freeman, though, opening up a huge gap. My name's Chuck Ray. I'm the athletic director here at Winthrop University. The worldwide recognition that we get here at Winthrop because of what U.S. disc golf and Innova has done has been incredible, especially with this 25th anniversary. We, we want to really celebrate this opportunity and, and what it can do for disc golf and what it can do for us at Winthrop. And I think this is only just the beginning. How fortunate we've been to be able to use this property for the last 25 years and best players in the history of the sport have walked these hollowed grounds. And you come here and play just throughout the year, you, you're staying on a pretty special property. Going to the short pin here on 13, 713 feet. Look how tight that is to the out of bounds. I think this one is gonna bait some people into making the mistake of playing a little bit too aggressively right on that second shot. Got to be careful of that out of bounds area. High hyzer for Joel. That's going to be just fine. It's going to be a pretty, pretty full throw from there with his forehand. Sidearm. Yes. Are you surprised? No. Not when you throw bombs. Is this farther than than Joel's backhand hyzer? That's He's the question. Sick. Oh wow. Yeah, good. That whole path is actually in bounds. It's the far side of it. That is the line. Very tight here for Robert. High and fading back left. The angle's not so bad over there, though. Nice little three, four foot roll out away from the mm -hmm. woods. That could make a big difference for him. 
Kyle, a similar line, just maybe a bit wider, going to get to the ground a bit sooner. How far is the sidearm from there? I think these guys are looking at the 340 range, is my guess. But a tight 340. A, a yes. 340 that needs to be penetrating at the end of the flight. You like to see I that, like that early shape. flex. Yes. This is, I think the play is to play long. And that and is exactly that. what Kyle's done. You've got to play. I think you play ideally a little closer than that, but I think the perfect shot is about 25 deep. Yes. On this hole, staying away from that out of bounds, trusting your putt. I like this angle. He doesn't have to go flex, so he's going to have an opportunity to bring it in a little bit tighter. Looks like he's also airing oh quite long. Oh, my gosh. It's just those That's discs are just miss. spinning so much. It's, it's incredible how much power he is getting with such little motion. Really aggressive flex here. Ah. Just lands perfectly flat, unable to get his skip. This is like Joel's favorite hole, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice spot to be a Joel. And he's going to be 25 the feet away. With a four shot lead, things are getting dangerous for everybody if Joel keeps this up. Wow. Oh, man, what a crazy line that would have been to go in. Really high, towering putt, just falling down straight. Dangerous putt right here. There is OB right behind mm. it. A good effort. Yes. A very good effort. Kyle also decent effort, just a little bit wide right. Joel, an opportunity to go five clear. Wow. Let's call it 27 feet. And it's in. Wow. Look at his last six holes, folks. Look at his last eight holes. Incredible. I mean, he eight did under. it yesterday. He did the exact same thing yesterday. And he's doing it again, just running through this back nine. Like it's <laughs> nothing. I think he likes the back nine. <laughs> Pretty clean up there for Kyle right in the middle. It's Remember, insane to imagine. I mean, you, yeah. you eagle 10 both days, 11, 12, 13. In a row, two days in a row, with the long position of 13 yesterday? That's yeah. incredible. And let's not forget that he also got 14, 15, sure. Sure. 16, and 17 also. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's the movie we're about to watch. We're going to see if he can back that up. If yeah. he does that, I mean, he's going to be sleeping on a huge lead. Well, he doesn't have five strokes anymore because Adam Ham has turned in a 10 under, and he is sitting at 14 under. But still, he is sitting pretty good right now at an average of nine under per round, and he's got holes to play. Nine under a round will get you the win here at Winthrop. And he's got himself an opportunity to pad that lead that he's developed and see if he can take it into the second half of the event. Another good birdie opportunity here. This is flexed over yeah, more than you'd like. wide. Does it sneak into the bottom of the green? It's yes. Gonna no. It's gonna roll. Wow. Not a I mean, not surprised to see it roll, but certainly frustrating. He did find safe land. You'd kind of hope that thing could just flop over, but it was coming in pretty sharp on that side hill. This This is a little this too is high, getting there, isn't huh? it? It's gonna go to the path. No, not. It's perfect. It's eagle-esque in, in its simplicity and its yes. lack of seemingly any effort. Yeah. Uh, that's, um, I've played a few times with Sully, but I, maybe not on a course that really allowed him to show off exactly how much distance he has behind that forehand. And, I mean, let's go ahead and say it. I'm, I'm highly impressed. Robert, a little too much Annie on that one. Tough one to run. About 45 feet. Kyle... If this has the distance, this is perfect. Yeah, good height takes away from any sort of yeah. roll potential. Nice shot. Yeah, Sully has a kind of forehand distance and compact swing that is very dangerous for someone like me to watch because I'll see him in my round and go, oh, I never thought of that. That didn't look that hard. And then I'll give it a <laughs> whirl and it'll be woefully short. It's, it's incredible because he can just take some lines that are uh, really... Pretty amazing, as we saw on 12, and we see Kyle's follow flight there just absolutely parked. He said it's a hard putt to run from back there. and gives it a decent height, but that's like one of those half and halves. Didn't quite really commit to a layup or a full run. Chance to save par. 
for Joel. And a little step backwards there for Joel. The field will get closer. Two closer, in fact, for yeah. Sully. Two closer for Kyle with his bullseye park job with the big forehand. Working off that double bogey, this will go a long ways. That was an impressive forehand for Kyle. He went really high. And typically when you see someone go that high on this hole, they need a lot of power or you're coming up short and you're going to find that hazard. Robert's been kind of falling asleep here on this back nine and he's kind of drifting away from the field in, a, in the wrong way. He's off the leaderboard, seven back. I like to turn things around here, moving into the final five hole stretch yeah, hole or four holes. Yeah, hole 15, par four, 539 through the triple mando, round the corner into the tight woods. No putt safe in there, I promise you that. First step, throw your straightest disc, get it to skip a little bit left. If Man, you can. Look at this. Just gonna get through the gap, the forehand perhaps? Oh, looks a little high. Oh, yeah. Through. Crushed. And it, look at that rollout. That's huge. If you're on the other side of those trees, don't ask me how I know. Not good. <laughs> Not good. Kyle with a bullet. Oh, this is lovely. Look at this nose up. Look at that. Just gonna keep sliding too. Just hoverboard. What a shot past all the trees he's going to have the opportunity to throw right down that walking path yeah, yeah just barely getting inside the right side and he goes so far whoa what's over there pass all well it's going to be uh, all hyzer on that forehand it's actually kind of tricky from back there and you can't ask me how i know about that one how do you know I've seen someone else play there. <laughs> I once played with a guy who could really throw hard. <laughs> All great shots through there. Yeah. Okay, so what are we going to see here? Wow. Really. A Love it. A lot of Anheuser. Love it. Dragging across. No Love way. It. What? It's oh. the pole from there. That is the second best shot of the day. What? That was incredible. Pulling the overstable disc across the front of the green. Off the pole, he is showing some real merit right now, folks. This is some good disc golf. Wow. Nice shot there as well. And look at that. All hyzer. Does he get the skip? It's going to be short. And the last thing Robert wants right now is a 45-foot low ceiling putt for birdie. He's been just not quite giving himself that good of opportunities. And this is pretty tight for Joel, but going to the wide side, I like going yeah. to the wide side. Yeah, the putts are much, much better on the left side of the basket. Just got to miss that yellow pole, and then you're home free, essentially. And that one was just woefully off. Meanwhile, Kyle steps up and knocks down the birdie. Very well played. What a shot for Sully. I mean, that yeah. was just out of position, standstill. Call it 295, maybe 300. And I mean, give him his officially his third shot of the round that I've never seen anyone take that line before. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like the ace, yep. the total 12 with the forehand, and yep. then that force over play mm -hmm. with a forehand around those trees. Never seen it done. On to hole 16, slightly downhill, par 3, 391 feet, surrounded by hazard on all sides, including deep, if you do let this get away from you a little bit. Backhand mid-range, backhand fairway driver, 
are great options here. Something you can keep nice and straight. Wouldn't be surprised if we see Sully go to the big hyzer forehand yeah. or perhaps the flex forehand. Oh, I think he's going big. And that's just, it's too easy for him to do this. It's so hard for players who don't have 500 feet of hyzer or wow. 470 in hyzer. But for him, thats he's laying off and getting that. That's huge. Just to be able to keep it flat that far out with that kind of height, fantastic shot. I don't know if it provides any perspective for our fans, but Nate and, and I are not even looking at that line anymore. It's just too far. Oh, oh what a nice little once reaction. Again. Huh? Kyle just keeps doing it. Can Joel get a little drag on this mm, mid-range? I'm worried about this. He got a little yeah, drag on sure it. sure did. I was worried about a little more fade. Well done from him. He knows the disc. Perfect weight on the shot. Slightly tricky putt, though, coming up. Whereas Kyle has an open look from C1 Edge. I think I might prefer Kyle's putt over. Oh, man. Such a good shot to be taking a stroke. Actually, never mind. Joel's, Joel's closer than I thought. Something's going yeah, on. Yeah, it's just not. Robert's putt. It's just not there right now. Another bogey coming up for Burge. Kyle for birdie, count it. Oh, that's so pretty. So good. I mean, he, that's five shots I can think. He's been in a rhythm, man. On the line, and he just drills it from outside the circle. Joel having to go wide highs. Oh no. no way! And you can look at that. That that little tree was squaring up the basket. Sully and Kyle are going to get one step closer again. Sullivan 16 under par. So many birdies on this back nine yes. for him. With the easiest little sidearm flick. And with the what bogey on the easiest hole on the course. Yeah, Where he just caught a bad away. break. Bad yeah, it was a bad roll. I'm just saying, like, it could be even better is what sure, I'm getting at. sure. Well, all good things can come to an end on 17. Yeah. We hope not. Do we, being commentators? No, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about it, Jerem. Oh, 17. I mean, doesn't get any more iconic than this one. I, I like this hole so much it went on the side of my RV. This is just a classic head case hole. You got to figure out how aggressive you want to be. Trust your disc and let it go. Sully's put this one out safe. That is just about as good as you could throw it. It was safe the whole time. He never had to worry about anything. Yeah. This is a little more aggressive, more width. And Similar result. Yep. Joel looking a little lower. No, wrong about that. I like this. <laughs> Looked like he was going to go for a bit more direct approach. And I like this hole for Joel also with his gator ability. Gator's a great speed for this hole, and he's got the great touch. All four players going forehand. This is going to be way on the right if it gets over. Yep. Oh, not as far as I thought. And the closest of the bunch, I think. Yeah. He's the only player inside the circle unless Joel snuck in. Good drives for everybody. This guy's such a good putter. He really he is, is such a good putter. Very good putter. One of the best. Makes putts. Jumper. Dude, yes. Sully, yes, man. <laughs> what a performance. I am loving this, man. First, first lead card. What a performance. Joel to stay the course. And another stroke. And he's letting them back in it. He had five on them after hole 13. And I think he's only got them by one now. You're right about that. Robert Burge, not the round he was looking for today, but you know, this guy has always shown a lot of class. I remember watching him in the Collegiate Nationals a few years ago. 
And even though he didn't win the collegiate nationals, he was really, to me, the one that really stood out in that show. And he, he showed that he had what it takes, that X factor, to really perform at the next level. And he backed it up. You know, he's been in contention so many times this season. He's had a great year and, and he's not gonna be on lead card tomorrow, but I wouldn't be surprised if his story is not over here at the USCGC. I think if he gets on a roll again, he could bring himself back in that top 10 category. Yeah, I expect him to put in a little time on the putting green tonight mm -hmm. uh, and, yes. and get that yeah. dialed down. And he actually did win collegiate nationals eventually. Yeah, the one that I saw, he, yeah. did, he did not. Hole 18, par four, 647, straight up the hill. Get the big pond on your left. Does it come into play until your putt? <laughs> you have the out of bounds up on the hill on the right. Very skinny green. How much distance? How... He's going for the big one. Yeah, this is smoked. Sit. And it's not just about power. With the, When you're going for the long forehand, you have to have the disc relatively flat as well. There's so much slope up there at that further landing zone. It takes a really, really good angle and power thrower forehand to get that far up the fairway. It's the farthest shot I've seen in years. Yeah, it's going to be one of the best shots of the whole day. I mean, the one that comes to mind, Calvin Heinberg, that one time that just went send, yes, yes, like all the way up to that ginkgo tree. But for a forehand and for really any shot, I mean, he's going to have as simple an approach as you can get into this hole. Joel's going to try to match him. He Do needs a pretty a good job of it. Sit down yeah, okay also a really big drive and that's a pretty flat landing zone as well so joel will have decent footing robert opting for the landing zone and oh he comes up just short of it and that's actually just as bad as any other place in the green, because it's actually quite a severe slope up to that little flat spot. And there's a severe slope right past that landing spot. If you don't hit it perfectly, it's kind of a bad gamble. This is looking really right. And it looked like that tried to cut roll back and just was unable to get back in bounds. And that's going to be another bogey here for Robert. This is perfect. You know, it, it, wow, that is so good. Robert was right in it after the front nine. Yeah. He was right in it. He was only maybe one or two back, and then this back nine is going to be one he's going to want to forget yeah. or learn from. Well, he'll, yeah, hopefully both. And if this uh, has the distance, this yes, is perfect. it's perfect. Wow. It's exactly the shape you're looking for. The weight and shape, perfect. And how much pace does Sully even need to put on this? He is so far up here. It's kind of this is like a touchy shot here, though. That was very well executed, but that is a. I almost prefer to be shorter off the tee because it's a more of a full throw. There, you're just really backing off. Go. Okay. Yeah, that's the putt he needed to finish with the bogey. It'll be eight under after two for Robert. Oh, man. <laughs> Did not expect that. But he can easily what a smile day. that one away. What a He's day still. very, very well. He put on a show, and, I mean, that was an incredible effort from him, and he's going to maintain his spot on this lead card. How about Kyle? Kyle taking the double bogey, laying up for the double bogey, yeah, and then just going on an absolute run to finish it. It's nine. All about trust, man. Belief in himself, confidence in his ability. I mean, the players finished three consecutive top tens here at the USDGC, and he's looking well on his way to doing it again. If not, put another run for the championship. Those two have the two best hairdos I've ever, <laughs> I've ever seen. Maybe. <laughs> Must be nice. 19 for Joel, 18 for Kyle, and 17 for Sully. It's going to be Bradley Williams jumping up. He has also had a fantastic season coming off a 10 under for this round, putting him at 15, joining those guys on the lead card for tomorrow. I'll tell you what, tomorrow is going to be a fun day because they got a lot of veterans behind them. 
lot of the superstars kind of waiting to see. We haven't seen that 14, 15 under, 12 under. It's supposed to be a little windier tomorrow. So I think if uh, somebody can get to that 12 under mark, we're gonna see some fireworks from some people. Such a tough course to play in some wind. Yeah. And well, I don't think it's gonna be crazy windy, but I think it's gonna be enough that you're gonna have to make some disc choice decisions that are a little different. Maybe lay up in some spots, maybe go after it in some spots. If you have a favorable wind, it's gonna see who can adapt to those yeah. kind of conditions. All right, two rounds in the books, two more to go. Moving day tomorrow, round three at the USGC. See you then. <laughs>